This is the inspiring true story of Eric Riddle, a man who selflessly devoted his life to helping others. This story begins in 1924, where we are introduced to a Scottish athlete named Eric. Eric won the gold medal in the 400-meter race at the 1924 Olympics. Despite this tremendous achievement, he didn't want to continue his athletic career. Although major companies urged him to keep competing, Eric was a missionary dedicated to spreading his faith. He decided to leave his country and move to China, the place where he was born. After arriving in China, Eric not only spreads his faith but also teaches school children. He has a deep love for the Chinese people and eventually marries a woman. Life is going well for Eric until one day, while he is teaching his class, one of his students arrives late, and he was carrying a basket of fruit. Suddenly, Japanese planes drop bombs on the area, and the child is killed. Witnessing this, Eric is devastated. Actually, Japan has attacked China, and one by one, the Japanese are taking control of many areas, and they are forcing the Chinese people to flee their country. Eric has two daughters, and his wife leaves China with them for their safety. However, Eric decides to stay behind to help the Chinese people. After bidding farewell to his wife and children, he returns to his home. Upon reaching home, he sees that his house completely destroyed by Japanese soldiers. Although it's deeply shaken to him, but Eric remains steadfast in his faith. With no place to stay, he goes to his school, which has become a refuge for many whose homes have been destroyed by the war. Eric supports everyone there, taking them out for runs to help divert their minds from the war's harsh realities. One day, Eric meets a child who seems to have no one else in the world. Eric takes the child to the school and teaches him to read and write. Everyone is greatly impressed by Eric's kindness. One day, Eric receives a letter from his wife, informing him that she has given birth to another daughter. This news brings tears to Eric's eyes, and he becomes very emotional. In celebration of his daughter's birth, he throws a party for everyone living with him. The next morning, Eric asks the child he had brought with him about his family. The child reveals that he has a brother who works at a hospital. The hospital is in dire straits, with no money or medicines left, and the patients are in very poor condition. Hearing this, Eric feels deep sorrow. Moved by compassion, he sells the watch, which was his family's last heirloom, and buys some medicines for the hospital. At that time, the Japanese soldiers had imposed a strict ban on purchasing medicines. At night, under the cover of darkness, Eric buys the medicines, loads them onto a truck, and heads towards the hospital in desperate need of supplies. He quickly reaches a checkpoint manned by numerous Japanese soldiers who stop his truck. Before they can inspect the truck, Eric steps out and shows them a piece of newspaper featuring his photograph from the time he won the gold medal at the Olympics. The Japanese soldiers ask him what you are doing in China. Eric replies, I work for a school and the truck contains supplies for the school children. The Japanese soldiers believe Eric's story and let them pass. Eric and his companions then swiftly deliver the much-needed medicines to the hospital, bringing relief to the suffering patients. A few days later, Eric finds out that Japan attacked Pearl Harbor in America. As a result, a war has broken out between America and Japan. This news brings hope, as it could potentially benefit China in its struggle against the Japanese occupation. One day, Eric attends a wedding where Japanese soldiers arrive and wreak havoc, capturing everyone and taking them to their camp. That night, a soldier comes to Eric and brings him to his commander. The commander, aware that Eric won a gold medal in the 400-meter race at the Olympics, the commander challenges him to a race. Despite it being many years ago and Eric not practicing for several years. Actually, the commander wants to humiliate him. He suggests giving Eric proper nourishment so he can be ready for the competition. Now, Eric begins to be served good food, but he himself doesn't eat it, instead, he shares it with the hungry people around him. Meanwhile, they are shown the child Eric brought from his school, who had mentioned that his brother works at the hospital facing a shortage of medicines. The child and one of Eric's friends start searching for Eric. Eventually, they find their way to the camp where Eric is located. Though they spot Eric, he doesn't see them, so both of them decide to start working in the camp. One day, Eric spots both of them working on the other side. His friend discreetly places a bag in a corner for him. Eric understands that it contains some provisions, so, under the cover of darkness, sneaking all the guards, he quietly retrieves the bag. Inside, he finds food supplies. Seeing this, Eric and all his fellow inmates are overjoyed. Now the day arrives for the race between Eric and the commander. Although Eric hasn't eaten properly for several days, the commander is unaware of this. 
As the race begins, Eric and the commander start running. However, due to weakness, Eric falls after a short while, allowing the commander to win the race and feel elated. But then Eric's friend speaks up, saying it was an unfair race, because Eric had not been eating properly for the past few days. Upon hearing this, a soldier becomes very angry and asks Eric what he did about his food. Eric responds, saying he shared all his food with his fellow inmates. Later on, Eric and his friend are severely beaten, and both of them are locked inside a small underground box. Hungry and thirsty, they spend the night there. Eric's companion, who brings food for Eric, he arrives there, and he gives him food, but Eric knows that his friend hasn't eaten anything either, so he shares his meal with his friend. Eric is advised to escape from there as he might be in danger, but he firmly refuses, stating that he cannot leave his companions behind. After a few days, Eric and his companions are released from under the ground because their punishment is over. When Eric enters his hall, everyone applauds him because Eric's sacrifice is significant. If he had eaten, he could have defeated the commander, but he didn't care about that and fed all his food to his companions. Now, Eric and his companions are given very harsh punishment. They are made to work a lot here because the commander is angry with them. Eric's companion approaches him and tells him that Japan is losing the war, which means there will be further cuts in rations. He tells Eric, I have arranged with the guard here. The child you brought to school, whose brother worked at the hospital, will deliver rations to us twice a month. Few days later, the child brings rations for them, which is why they get something to eat. One day, Eric's friend is outside smoking a cigarette, which Japanese soldiers notice and severely beat him. He realizes that if he stays here any longer, he will be killed. Therefore, he wants to escape from here. He plans with Eric's friend who works here and with the help of the child who brings food for them, he plans to escape from here, which he successfully did. But when the soldiers find out that a prisoner has escaped from here, they get very angry. The commander asks everyone how the prisoner managed to escape from here, but no one gives an answer, so the commander punishes one of the prisoners by locking him underground, so that the others can speak the truth. But no one knows anything, so the commander doesn't get any answers. Meanwhile, Eric's health has started deteriorating slowly. Blood often comes out of his nose, but there is no one here to treat him. In fact, there is a lot of mistreatment with the prisoners here. After a few days, even that prisoner is taken out, who was locked underground. Although he is taken out, his condition is very critical. He has pneumonia and there is no improvement in his condition. Everyone accepts that he cannot survive now, but Eric does not accept this. He comes to know that there is a doctor among the prisoners. He goes to him and says that we have to save him. Both of them try to treat him, but the doctor says that we do not have the medicines we need, and it is impossible to save him without the medicines. But Eric wants to save him at any cost. Therefore, he goes to the commander and challenges him. Eric says, I will race with you again, and if I win the race, then we should be allowed to get medicines from outside. Initially, the commander refuses, but he sees Eric's condition which is very critical. He understands that Eric cannot race with him, so he accepts his challenge. Commander says, after seven days, we will have a race between us. Eric only has a week. However, all his companions tell him that he cannot win this race. He doesn't have the diet or strength within him. But Eric doesn't listen to anyone, and he prepares for the race. Soon, a week passes, and today there is a race between the commander and Eric. No prisoner is allowed to watch the race from outside, so everyone is praying for Eric from within. Outside, the race between Eric and the commander begins. The commander takes the lead, but slowly Eric increases his speed because he has to win this race at any cost. If he loses this race, his companion will lose the race of life. And finally, Eric wins this race, and after that, he is granted permission to get medicines from outside. Now, the same child who brings food for them also brings medicine. Everyone is very happy to see the medicines. After giving the medicines, the child returns from here. The commander knows that the child will climb out from over the wires and escape. So, he goes to the room where the entire electricity is controlled. At that moment, a guard comes to Eric and tells him that the commander is going to supply the electricity in those wires, which way the child will be goes out from here. Everyone rushes outside to stop the child. They shout at him to jump down from above, but he doesn't listen. On the flip side, the commander is shown who is going to supply electricity in those wires. One of his companion tries to stop him, but he cannot stop the commander, and, electricity spreads through all the wires, resulting in the death of the child. Eric feels very sad about this. 
Then the commander comes there and says that anyone who breaks my rules will face the same fate. A few days later, the same prisoner also dies for whom Eric had arranged the medicines. Actually, he was a very good friend of Eric. Eric then goes to his wife and tells her that her husband is no longer in this world. Hearing this, the wife collapses right there on the ground. A few days later, Christmas arrives. Since, Eric is a Christian, so he is allowed to go home. But Eric requests permission to send his friend's pregnant wife outside in return, and the permission is granted to Eric. Eric does this so that if his friend's wife can get out of here, she can give birth to her child comfortably. Actually, Eric, being a believer in God, has a lot of compassion and mercy in his heart. That's why he always thinks about others before himself. Several more months pass, and Eric's health deteriorates significantly. Blood frequently drips from his nose because he has a brain tumor, and his death comes quickly as well. His demise saddens all the prisoners greatly. Following the rituals, they bury him, offering prayers. After five months, news arrives that Japan has lost the war, and World War II has come to an end. Hearing this, all the prisoners are overjoyed. For many years, they were imprisoned here, and today they are all free. They remember Eric because he always supported them, despite not being from their country. He was from another country, yet perhaps for him, humanity was foremost. While he could have left this country with his wife and daughters, he chose not to. Instead, he decided to stay here and serve the people. Although he has now passed away, people like him always live on in the hearts and minds of others. Just as Eric remains alive in the memories of many Chinese people today. This was the complete story of Eric. It's a true story from the time of World War II. So friends, we hope you enjoyed this story.